So, so how do you how do you fix this? What, what's the best way to fix this? Well, wouldn't it be great if I could go through the front? I mean, imagine going through the belly to get to the spine, right? Uh, it's a long ways down. It's just hard to do a good job. The largest pipes in the human body are right in front. The aorta, the inferior vena cava, these are massive blood vessels. It's just very hard to do a good surgery reaching around these blood vessels um, for trauma, for cancer. I, I do it, I do it sometimes, but not, not for degenerative disease. It would be really hard to do A plus work. So, so that, leaves, that leaves coming in through the back, right? Um, and so for years, traditional spine surgery, we would, we would make a very long incision uh, on the skin in your back, um, pull all the muscles off the spine. You see all your muscles are attached to these black bony plates. These are the pokey things that you feel in the back. Um, all the muscles are attached to those bones. Well, to get to the disc, remember, which is in front of the nerves, how, how are you gonna get to the front through the back? Do, do, do you see why back surgery has been such a challenge? Right in the neck, it, it's super easy to access the spine. It's right there. I don't have to cut anything, I just separate. So, so for years, neck surgery has been very effective, no matter who did the surgery. But, but back surgery, you see the challenge, uh, how it's much more difficult to get to the disc space in front of the nerve. So how did we do that? Well, well, through the big incision, we would literally pull the muscles off the spine, right? Then we would have to remove uh, a lot of this tissue, right? So we would literally remove and unpinch the nerves, right? Well, well, well great, you've unpinched the nerves, but, but look what's left, right? We made a weak joint weaker. How, how, how does that help you in the long run? But if you don't fix why the nerve was pinched, it's just gonna pinch again, right? The pathology will, will recapitulate. Um, better, better if we could fix why the nerve was pinched, right? If we could fix why the nerve was pinched, that would last forever, that would be a cure, that would be a fix, not a Band-Aid. This is a Band-Aid. It, 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 that we made a weak joint weaker. We did not fix why the nerve was pinched. In fact, this kind of surgery actually makes it weaker, makes the why worse, right? Um, so so uh, can we do a surgery that, that preserves all of this, that leaves all of this? And, and, and we can and we do, and this is what I've done. So we, we leave all of your God-given good stuff and, and try only to address what, what's, what's bad, what's, what's doing the pinching. And so if I redraw this in, where it's pinching the nerves, um, uh, it looks something like that. But as this disc space collapses, remember the hole where the nerve comes out, it also must collapse, right? So this hole is very small. Um, it needs, needs help anyway. So what I do is, is do a surgery through a tube that's smaller than your finger, right? Because this hole is small. And I'll come down obliquely under the nerves, right through this hole. So I'll start by making this hole bigger and unpinch uh, the nerve, of course, that's coming out of this hole. Um, but then through that hole, I can address the pathology directly. I can remove the disc rupture. If there's a disc rupture, I can remove the bone spurs and I remove all of the disc. I can draw back in the nerve here. So I work under the nerves, right through that hole. Um, so, so fantastic, I'm able to unpinch the nerves and remove the extra bone from inside the canal. I'm able to unpinch the nerves without making you weaker, that's great. But remember, the whole point that those bone spurs were there was the joint was too weak to begin with, right? Um, so it's not good enough to unpinch the nerves and not make it weaker. I need to make it stronger. I need to make the joint stronger, right? We're gonna fix why those bone spurs were there. And so, so how I do that is I put in uh, this metal shim that we talked about. I replace the disc with a titanium implant. That implant's porous. The bone can grab onto it and use it. 
uh, much like a dental implant or a filling or an artificial hip or knee, right? The body can grab onto that metal and use it. I don't have to wait for fusion. I don't have to wait for cadaver bone or dead bone to be rejected by the body and regrow. I'm not growing bone across a 13 millimeter gap, am I? Instead, the bones can grab on to that porous titanium implant. Let, let, let me expand on this a little more. If I draw a, a cartoon of a disc space here, again, it's in between these two big blocks of bone, the disc is, I'll draw it in blue. The bones are drawn in black. Well, that disc is held in place, as you recall, by cables. Again, they're not elastic. Think of like the Mackinac Bridge, right? Uh, these are these are cables. It, it allows movement, but they're but they're uh, uh, under tension, right? To to keep this joint stable. But what happens? What happens if the disc space collapses? What happens if I push the shores of St. Ignace and Mackinac City a quarter mile closer together? Those cables, those cables would sag, right? They would become loose. You see. And, and, and if, now, if now, as a result of that joint being loose, the disc ruptures, let's say you lose 30% of, of the disc, right? The, 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 the joint itself is going to collapse. And maybe you've noticed this. Maybe you've noticed over the years you've gotten shorter. We get shorter throughout the day, in fact, right? The, the disc spaces collapse. And again, as they collapse, the cables buckle. So now you see, if you do a surgery just to remove the disc rupture, and, and the, some of this cable, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? The, the, the disc space is gonna collapse more. The joint is gonna be weaker, right? That, that, that's not ideal. What if, what if I could take this joint and restore? What if I could restore the disc space height, restore the tension to those cables, right? Do you see how that would be better? Well, well how I did it today is I put that, that shim, that implant in the disc space. It goes in collapsed, it's small, it's safe. I can put it in through a little bitty tube safely around the nerve, under your nerves, right? And then when I hit it with a torque driver, that shim expands. But the brilliant thing is, is it doesn't just scissor jack open like a car jack, no. It, it, it scissor jacks open asymmetrically and forms a, a wedge. You see what that does? Not only does that, does that make the bones uh, taller, and, and snap the cables tight, right, which is strong right now, um, but also it, uh, it, it's restored your alignment. Do you see how it's uh, enabled the bones to restore to their normal curvature? I do not want the spine flat. That's not good. The spine should be like a spring, right? The chiropractors have had this right all along. If I can, if I can restore the curvature to the spine, It'll, it'll dissipate the energy of gravity better. Do you see? So, so look at what we've done. We, we've, we've restored your height, restored the stability, and restored the alignment. It's very natural, right? We restored, we didn't, we didn't change, right? You're, you're the same after surgery. We've added, you're stronger. So I don't have to wait for fusion. These, these, the, the bones are already touching the edge of that porous titanium, right? And, and, and so the, the, the body will grab onto that just like an artificial hip or knee or dental implant. In order to hold the alignment proper, uh, we also uh, put uh, screws in here and here to internally cast the spine, right? I, I have to hold it still so that the body can do the miracle and heal. Uh, very much like um, you would cast a broken arm. Do you think the cast cures you? Do you think the orthopedic surgeon cures you? No, you cure you. The cast merely holds the bones together, holds them still so that the body can do the miracle, right? But, but imagine if, if you have a cast on a broken arm, imagine if I were to grab your hand and wiggle it. How, how do you think that would feel, right? That would, that would hurt the broken arm and it certainly wouldn't help it heal, would it? right, the, uh, wiggling those fragments. Um, imagine if you have a cast on a broken arm, imagine if I were to grab your hand and twist it. How would that feel? 
you, you would pass out. Even in spite of the cast, that would be extraordinarily painful and it would not allow the bones to heal. Well, what if, what if I hung a grocery bag full of sand on your hand? Again, you have a broken arm in a cast. What if I hung a bag of sand on your hand? That would, again, probably hurt and probably would not help it heal. Agree? Well, what do you think's happening to your spine? You have a bag of sand, a lot of it, like 60, 80 pounds of it on top of a loose joint. And you are wiggling it every second of every day. You are twisting it frequently throughout the day, right? So it's much more difficult to get the spine to heal properly. The body is not defective. It just needs help because it has all these forces acting against it. No surgery is minimally invasive if it doesn't work. The surgery has to work first and foremost. So 90% of the surgery is here in the disc space, replacing the disc with something stronger, with storing, adding. Um, but the pins I have to add to resist torsion. You see, so, so the pins have to be there. They're very small. They're just designed to reduce the torsion. And, and this is how we give the body that chance at, at healing and healing this properly, right? And, and so yes, uh, those, those, are, those are added. Um, you can still go through airports and metal detectors. Um, the, the metal becomes like a hitchhiker, uh, like a filling uh, in, the, in the long run.